Welcome to our next lecture in the series on condensed matter theory. In this video, I want to talk about an example of a tight binding model, and we're going to start easy by a one dimensional chain of hydrogen atoms. So, of course, that's not really a real material yet, but actually, it is a model that you can use for several materials that form one dimensional bands where only one orbital is of importance. So we're going to look at hydrogen atoms and for the hydrogen atom we're only going to take the 1s orbital into account. So our local wave functions omega of r are going to be the atomic wave functions of the hydrogen atom and that is 1 over a0 to the power 3 half e to the minus are divided by the Bohr radius. We have a lattice in 1D, so a chain of lattice points, and at each lattice point we have this atomic basis function. So our Delta R is either 0 times A or 1 times A or 2 times A, etc. And the lattice constant A is the norm of the vector A. We can have a look at our hopping and the unsigned hopping for Delta R is 0 times A is given by the 1s wave function times the Hamiltonian times the 1s wave function. Well, if the Hamiltonian would be the Hamiltonian of a single hydrogen atom, then what we have here is just the binding energy for that atom. Now we have of course also the other nuclei in there, but this should be roughly one Rydberg. So this is what we call in the epsilon 1s, the on-site energy, and this is roughly minus one Rydberg. Now we can have a look at the nearest neighbor hopping. Where we hop from our wave function centered at the origin with the Hamiltonian to the wave function centered at A. Well, in order to calculate this matrix element, we're going to have a look at both the potential as well as the kinetic energy. So, in general, we know that the kinetic energy for the hydrogen atom is given by omega 1s at r p square over 2m omega 1s centered at r and for the hydrogen atom this is plus 1 Rydberg. If you have a plane wave extending to infinite with wave vector 0 then you have zero kinetic energy, you can now enhance k, you can shorten the wavelength to get some kinetic energy. If you want to build the local hydrogen wave function you have to combine several different wave vectors with different wavelengths and for that you get some kinetic energy and if you work this out for the hydrogen wave function you will find that you have one Rydberg of kinetic energy. Now the potential energy which of course you should now even be able to calculate if you would not have known it before we pay one Rydberg in kinetic energy we have a binding energy of one Rydberg so if we look at the potential energy that we have in our hydrogen atom, then this is minus two Rydberg. So the potential energy is twice as large as your kinetic energy and of opposite sign. Now why do atoms bind in a solid? 
If you compare the solid to completely free electrons, then for free electrons you have no kinetic energy, no potential energy. So you pay when you make a solid in kinetic energy and you gain in potential energy. Let's see if we can estimate what this integral is. So let's neglect some long range potential energy. So we're going to keep only e square over r and e square over r minus a in our Hamiltonian, but neglect all others. Then our nearest neighbor hopping integral is omega 1s r minus a p square over 2m minus e square over r minus e square over r minus a omega 1s of r. This is well, if we look at this part, that is just the atomic Hamiltonian around side 1s. So that is going to give me an energy of minus 1 Rydberg. So this is minus 1, acting on that, omega 1s, r minus a omega 1s of r and then we have minus omega 1s r minus a e square over r minus a norm omega 1s centered around the origin. So we can make a plot of these two wave functions such that we can estimate how big the product and the integral over that product is. This is our 1s wave function centered at side 1 and set side 2. And we see that we have here a point in space where they overlap. So you have to multiply them and integrate and a minus sign in front. So this gives you a negative contribution. Then here we have our two wave functions, the omega 1s centered around the origin and then centered at side A with a 1 over r minus A on top of that, so it's an additional decay, so this one is decaying faster and diverging. But also there is some overlap. This overlap is going to be bigger than that one. Both are positive, have an additional uh, minus sign in front. So in total we can safely say that T1 is smaller than zero. We also know that um, if this was a wave function centered at the origin, in total this would give you one Rydberg in energy. It's now a fraction of that, so we know that T1 must be smaller than one Rydberg. And of course the the integral now depends on the distance between your atoms, but in reality T1 is normally of the order of something like minus 0.1 Rydberg. All right, it can be twice as big, it can be twice as small, but it's the order of electron volts that will come out for your hopping matrix elements. T2 and between two S electrons it is negative and that's very important because that will allow us to conclude that we get electron bands and that you can get to free electron like bands. T2 is omega 1s r minus 2a 
Hamiltonian, omega 1s, r. Now our wave function is exponential decaying um, when t1 is already a factor of 10 smaller than the on-site energy, then t2 is even more than that smaller than t1. So we can state that t2 is going to be much smaller than t1. And for our model that we have here, we can neglect it. We'll get back to longer range hoppings later in this lecture. The Hamiltonian is then going to be a sum over all lattice sites, epsilon 1s, a dagger r, a r, plus t1, a dagger r, a r plus a, plus a dagger r plus a, a r. We can now diagonalize this Hamiltonian by making a Fourier transform. So we're going to insert a dagger r is the square root 1 over v, sum over all crystal momenta e to the minus i k dot r, a dagger k, and a r is square root 1 over v, sum over all crystal momentum e to the i k dot r, a k. And if we insert this and realize that um, sum over e to the i k r minus r prime um, is only non-zero when r is equal to r prime, then we get to the Hamiltonian, that is a sum over all crystal momentum, epsilon 1s plus t e to the i k dot a plus e to the minus i k dot a a dagger k a k. And this, of course, we can write as a cosine. So it's a sum over all crystal momenta, epsilon 1s plus 2t cosine ka, a dagger k, a k. So we can now plot our band structure where we have the bent energy as a function of crystal momentum in the brilliant zone going from minus pi over a to pi over a and the dispersion is cosine-like. And the bandwidth is 40. Now we can also look at the densities of states. So when the dispersion is large and you just look at a discrete set of states, then you find less number of states per energy than when the dispersion is very flat. When the dispersion is zero, you basically find an infinite number of states per an infinitesimal energy change. So what we find is that our densities of states diverges at the bent energy or bent edges and then has this kind of behavior. And it is, of course, the densities of states that you need when you want to calculate things like specific heat or total energy. So other material properties where you know what the property is as a function of the energy in the band. And then you can use this to calculate 
expectation values of that property at a specific energy and temperature. So we've seen here an example how we can work with um, tight binding theory. And in the next video, I want to now have a look at a comparison between a tight binding model and a free electron state. Thank you very much. Uh, for now, we see each other in the next video. Stay healthy.